In this edition of our Modeling Fundamentals with Power Pro Structures, we're dealing with dynamic bracing. Now we're not going to go right through every little facet of dynamic bracing. I'm going to leave it to you to have a little bit of a play with, but I'll show you some of the functions and, and some of the options that it does, and that'll give you a, a pretty good help along the way with how it works. So we're going to kick off by heading up to the Pro Steel um, task. And you can see on line W here, dynamic bracing. It's also got a little flyout next to it. So if you have a look at the flyout, we can see we've got a whole heap of options here. Please feel free to go and have a play with a lot of these. Um, a lot of them are quite specific for particular jobs and particular circumstances. And rather than make an hour video, we'll just go through the dynamic one, which just covers the basis of um, intelligent bracing. Before we get going on dynamic bracing, I'm going to have to turn, um, I'll turn this model around, we'll work on this back face, but I'm going to have to put in some construction lines to put my bracing in on. So I'm going to put it in this bay here, and the easiest way to kind of put a lot of construction lines in is probably to get rid of our steel and work with our work frame if we have one. So in my level display, I'm going to turn off shapes, plates and bolts which just leaves our work frame, making it really nice and easy for me to put construction lines on. So I'm going to use a smart line, and I've got a little trick here for you. All right, We're starting to get a little bit more advanced here. I want to put a, a line in here between two points. So I'm going to go tentative snap. I don't want to draw the line yet. I'm going to set O, letter O for origin. Next I'm going to move the cursor to the section that I want divided in half. If you just look up on the right at the AccuDraw browser, you can follow what I'm doing here. And I'm going to hit the divide button on my number keyboard and divide by 2. And you can see that it divides those two points in half. I accept and then I can go tentative and accept again. So let's go again. Tentative snap, accept, tentative snap letter O for origin, letter O, go to the end of the section I want to divide in half, just hover the cursor there, I hit the divide button on my numeral keyboard and number two, just like that, works a treat. With that done I'm just going to go and turn my levels back on, a little bit easier just to put that, that um, line work in before I've got my steel work there. Uh, you can see that these lines go to the top of steel. I'd like those to come down to the halfway point. So I'm just going to click on the node there and if I, on my keyboard if I go F for front that will rotate my focal point around. And I can just drag it down and I should have a snap point here about halfway. There it is there. So I can just snap it to the middle of my beam. Okay, I'll do the same here. Just grab the node uh, F on the keyboard, F for front, drag it down till it snaps at halfway. Uh, don't forget to lock that plane as you're moving it down just to make sure that it doesn't get away on you. Hitting enter locks it. Alright, uh, let's drag these guys up because at the moment they're underneath the base plate so again I'll have to rotate my focal point. Um, in this instance here the focal point's up the other end so if I go O for origin, it'll bring the focal point down here, F for front, lock it, and then drag it up to and snap it to the point where I want it. A little bit of a routine to sort of get used to, but you can see there it snapped exactly where I need it to snap, which is right in the middle of that column. So the procedure, I'll grab a couple of these lines. I will need to go O for origin to move my focal point back down. I'll need to roll it round, so F for front, lock it by hitting enter, and then drag it up and snap it. You get really quick at this. F for front, lock it, and move it up. Really nice and easy. You'll get very quick at this. Now one of the things that I'd like to warn you about, and I'm just going to turn these levels back off for a sec just so I can show it to you clearly, is I really want to make sure that the construction lines for my bracing 
are dead in the middle of my steel work okay it's really important that these construction lines I put in are not angled away because I've snapped to the wrong location you know front edge of steel to center line or something like that um, it's really important because otherwise all it's going to do is it's going to put the bracing in on an angle okay so you just want to be a little bit careful with this sort of thing make sure everything's nice and square everything down the center line all right so with my levels back on let's go and have a look at pro steel dynamic bracing all right so what it's going to ask us here is identify the system line that's my construction line that I just created so I'm going to grab one of the construction lines and the next thing it's going to be asking me for is to identify the main support part and the second main support part all right the two objects that support this angle brace all right in it goes um, you can see it puts connections and everything in which is uh, does a nice neat job of that by default now if we have a look at this what you can see here you can see that we've got our bracing with a yellow cross just here you can just just make it out a little bit hard in 3d but this yellow cross that is our intelligence this is our, our logical link as such uh, allows us to get into the properties to, to, to edit it also allows us to delete the entire brace connection if we wanted to delete all the objects in one hit. Okay, it's far better than selecting each object one at a time. Now, other than the support lines being nice and square to the plane, the other thing that I'd like you to check every time you put this bracing in, I'm just going to go object view centered looking down on that connection cleat that I put in. That connection cleat should be on the center line of that column. It's okay if you don't specifically don't want it on the center line of the column. But generally speaking, I find that it's a lot easier for the guys, the fabricators, to make it if it's not left or right or something like that. Okay, so just check the location of that cleat. The location of that cleat is driven here by, if I, if I just bring this dialog back up, the depth according. So that cleat here, is, it, it's, it's, it's driven by the depth according to ACS. Okay. So at the moment it's set at minus five and it will change depending on the cleat, it'll change depending on what sort of bracing you put in. It, it, it will constantly be in flux, that number. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it'll be set to zero, etc. All right, so let's have a look at our bracing catalog. We have our bracing type are normal, which is our shape or angle bracing. We have a rod bracing and we have pipe bracing. Okay. Now, depending on whichever one of these that we choose, then changes the options that are required. So the options are found here in shape bracing, pipe bracing, rod bracing, these tabs across here. So if we kind of, um, in this instance, we're set to shape bracing. If I go to shape bracing, you can see I've got all the different options here for the shape bracing. If I set it to pipe, you can see specific for pipe and same with rod bracing. Okay, so you know plate thicknesses and, and offsets and so forth are quite specific to each brace. The common kind of drives the, 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 the connection and so forth and the bolting will drive the initial mounting to the main connection plates etc. So whereby initially some of this stuff might come across a little bit daunting to a new user etc. I've actually if we come down here to templates I've given you a template for each type of brace so that you've got something to start with. So you can see angle bracing, like what we've started with, pipe bracing, you just expand it out. There's a little template here under each one. Rod bracing, so you've got a welded rod brace and you've got um, your pipe tie and so forth. So if I set it to pipe tie, you can see that I've got a little end plated pipe tie there. Pipe ties can also be, if I went to the pipe tab, um, we could also have the option here to set it not for an end plate, but to actually have it sliced where the pipe is sliced by the plate. So depending on what you want to adjust, if I want to adjust anything, you go from the template, you go from there. So, you know, in this instance, I might want this a four bolt connection where you just change it and it'll update. If you get out of control, um, then go back to the template. And this can be said for any of our automatic connections in ProSteel. If you just if you lose track of where you are, just come back here to your template, go find your original template that you worked from, 
and, and just feel free to start again. All right. All right. So let's load in something a little bit different here. Okay, let's let's drop in rod bracing. So the rod bracing has a standard fitting cleat. Um, our rod welds to a little bit of uh, plate. This little object here is actually our turnbuckle or representative of our turnbuckle. All right, so if I go to the rod bracing here, uh, I can nominate a name for it, as well as specify the lengths and bits and pieces um, of how I want my turnbuckle to sort of the overall lengths and bits and pieces. I can also have it uh, D shackle type, uh, like a D uh, speedy brace type um, bracing and everything as well. All right, well that's enough talk. So let's um, switch this guy back to a pipe brace. I'll put pipe braces right through the bottom down here. So I'll find my template for pipe brace. Here it is, double click and load it in. I'll just go with the default. And if you've got to put a new one in, just come back to your command. And remember, grab your system line, the support shape, support shape, in it goes. And don't forget, to check those couple of bits and pieces like the, um, uh, the plate location on the column and so forth. Alright, so I'm just going to put lower level pipe ties in here. Just symbolic of some bracing. Probably not, probably a bit of overkill for this building. So, so far we've we've sort of put in our bracing to system lines quite methodically. What if we wanted to do something a little bit quick and nasty? Well, I want to be on this plane, I'm going to go object view centered and instead of picking a system line, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to pick a point. Now don't snap to anything. Okay, I just want to be on this plane and just pick two nominal points on this plane in space. Grab my two support members, okay, and in it will go. It'll put our bracing in. Okay, so this is kind of quick and dirty. I, if I want it cross bracing, there's a little switch here to make it into cross bracing. Okay, that system cross here will allow me to get grips up on the corner here, little handles, and I can grab the handle and I can drag it down. It's all dynamic, which means it'll update all the cleats as I go. See, I can drag that around and it'll update the cleats as we go, which is pretty cool. I'll just undo that. So control Z to undo that back out again. And just a little user tip here, if I wanted to move these braces around individually, I probably wouldn't have cross braced. I probably would have put them in individually as two separate braces. Now before I wrap up, I just want to show you some of the different options and bits and pieces if you have a bit of a play in here. At the moment we've got a center play. I could actually cross these over and have a center hole. Before I have a center hole, I've got to cross these. so. Can have them on the front, on the back, crossed. So I've chosen cross there. You can see they're back to back now. Now if I put a center hole, it'll drill a center hole in it, which is pretty cool. Additionally, instead of having a center hole, let's get rid of the center hole. Um, let's move them both to the front again. Uh, we'll get rid of this center hole, um, but we'll divide and that'll tell it that it wants a big plate through the middle of it. So there's all sorts of funky stuff that we can do with these. You've just got to be prepared to just go and have a little bit of a look. Now what I'm going to do, I'll just reset this back to the original cross bracing that we had, just for simplicity. Um, they were crossed over and we have sent a hole. Makes these nice and simple. Uh, and I'll finish this one off like that. That's how I want it to to, to look. All right, um, so that's how it looks. It does a really nice job of bracing. Let's just go through some of the things that might give you a little bit of trouble. All right, so I'm just going to go object uh, view centered looking on this cleat here. Object view centered. We'll just look straight into that cleat there. Now, a little bit hard to explain this, but see how that cleat comes down and it lands right on that column there. Um, where you will have trouble with this is if your construction line makes it down here so that the cleat won't land on the column properly, this might give you trouble. It's actually easier to make the cleat kind of line, you know, land up on the column and move it later. It will tolerate it later like it has here now. 
and remember you can just grab the handle from the the intelligent cross in the middle and, and then shuffle the cleat around like that. The other thing that's going to give you trouble is to ensure that this cleat is in the center line of your um, of your column. Okay, this will be the thing you'll forget to check is where is this cleat relative to my column? Is it down the center? You know, is it nice and easy for my for my workshop to fabricate? Okay, and finally the construction cross through the middle, you know, the construction lines that we physically worked on to begin with, please make sure they're nice and straight to the structure itself.